our prophetic word uh, for the year, which is coming from Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I guess it would be my title. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Can you guys hear me loud and clear? Oh, yes. Amen. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And, um, you know, every year I think about since I alone, you know, wherever I go, I'll pick up a bulletin. I'll see uh, what that particular ministry the Lord is doing through them. And that is how you learn as you go along. And since I started, uh, we as having uh, a, a, a scripture of the year. Uh, every year I think as I'm thinking, praying and thinking, meditating. I say, Lord, what would you have us? You know, I'm asking what that this passage was in my spirit a long time, but I've never thought about it until last night. The Lord says, yeah, you, you've been thinking about that passage. That's what you use today. Mm-hmm. And then I was thinking about what you teach today. I said, well, you brought a passage in as your uh, 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 passage of the year or scripture of the year. So you do some teaching on that. So we are going to be learning today. Uh, I believe that when time permits, we are going to be, I'm going to be going through some scriptures uh, with us, with the help of uh, the Bible. Uh, uh, there is a saying that if it is not broken, you don't fix it, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so when you happen to find a very good uh, ag- exposition, exegesis, mm-hmm. uh, I love to do my own exegesis and expositions, which is, I believe it is one of my um, uh, weak areas uh, because when I'm studying, as I begin to study this high level in in, uh, theology, there are certain things that I'm like, you know, I've been doing. So it's instead of me to let myself, you see what I'm saying? Everyone has a, I I noticed that about me, you know? So I'm like, oh, why I'm going to be? sitting down to write paper for what I've been doing for a long time, you know. So mm-hmm. it, it, it is, I found a, a very good uh, exposition that I'll be bringing uh, as to the, the reason I do a lot of exegesis and exposition on myself is by myself, is though I read others that allow you to flow then because the Holy Spirit, but then every once in a while you find something that the Lord, I'm giving credit to where Credit is due. The Bible says, you know, give credit to whom credit is due, you know, custom to custom, tax for custom, and things like that. So uh, you, you realize that, wow, the person will just say just as you would, even better than you would have said it. So if it is not broken, you don't fix it. So I realize, okay, it's not broken. I'm not going to fix it. So I'm going to bring to us where it is already there. So today we are going to be learning from uh, Colossians verse one this has it has only 25 verses we are good i'm gonna do my best to see if we can go through verse 17 then we're gonna leave verses 18 through 25 for next sunday uh before i go into that let me read i'm reading from the new king james version say if then you were raised with christ Seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Set your minds on things above, not on things on earth. Mm-hmm. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ. In God and again you know when we read a New Testament the New Testament is the I look at the New Testament as commentary of the Old Testament but then when we read the New Testament you also realize that the letters or the epistles always speaks to our pre-christianity or pre-christian lifestyle 
to us as believers to remind us where we were coming from and then also remind us of those who are still there. And again, reminding us over and over, this is where I redeem you from. Be careful. Don't go back there. <laughs> you know. So yes. Say so be careful. You know. Be careful. So set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And again, reminding us, uh, uh oh, just as the Bible says, right now we've been redeemed, sealed by the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. Reminding us that, hey, a day is coming. You're going to appear with him on that day. Therefore, put to death. Put to death your members which are on the earth. And then he gave us those members, those things which are on earth, which we find in the book of Galatians, which describe the fleshly desires. Then he, he, give, he gave us all the fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. You know, uh, let me pause here a little bit. Man, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish everything here today. Even if it takes three weeks, I'll do it. Take three Sundays. I'd rather take my time to do it. Um, you know, when I listen to, and again, the body of Christ, God has given us gift. Every minister has, you know, special gift for how he or she operates, how he teaches, and how he does those things within the confines of the scriptures. There are some churches, and I find myself, I don't want to, because if you're not careful, you would try to mimic someone, which is not your calling, because there are other member, uh, other ministers who would hardly read this portion of passage, not even bring it in, which is, which tells that, Places like that are not balanced when they are teaching the counsel of the Lord. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness. So these, some of these places only tell you what you want to hear. Your life is okay. Which is, there's nothing wrong with it, you know. Live your moment, live your life now. Which is, there's nothing wrong with it, okay. You are victorious. There's nothing wrong with it. You are triumphant. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, uh, uh, you, 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 you just have to have a positive mind. There's nothing wrong with it. But even the atheists, those who deny God, are like that. So if you are in a church, if you don't bring the balance, if you, 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 you see all those positive, you know, good things, Without letting an individual know that the primary, the, the, the objective of Christ is your redemption. That's it. That's number one. You know, not how you should live your life right here. That is, that comes as a package. But the primary purpose for Christ coming here is you have seen, you have been born as a sinner and you need Redemption. You need a savior. So again, as the, the Bible says, as we, we, we are reading uh, Colossians chapter 3, am I making sense to you guys? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he said, therefore put to death huh, your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and Covetousness, which is idolatry. Because, verse 6, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked in when you lived in them. Oh, I can identify with that. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I can identify with that. 
And again, the church is supposed to teach the full counsel of the Lord. I remember one time somebody came to my church and he says, well, when I came to your church, I left. I was discouraged. I'm like, why not? So, well, I went to churches. They tell me, they give me this boost, meaning they just tell me, you can do this, you can do that, but they never tell me of my sin. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, because I, and, and I don't want to change. That is my calling. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't want to follow anybody else. I try to balance because if I give you that high uh, emotional driven message and I did not give you the reason behind Christ coming here, then I failed my Lord. Amen. Then I am not doing you any good. Okay? Because atheists, atheists, there are many atheists among us who are filter rich. Is that right? Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> so financial or material affluency has nothing to do with godliness. Hmm. Okay? At all. <laughs> so when you come to the church, you have to hear both sides. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of churches won't teach these things. They, it's not because they don't know it. They know it. Hmm. But they don't want... They, they want to give you feel good message, and it is true. You go in there, nobody touches on your last night problem, nobody touches on your porn addiction lifestyle. You know, you come home and you, and you know you have this. Is what Paul says, the members say, put to death your members which are on the earth. But he mentioned those things, and then verse 8 says, But now. You yourselves are to put off. This is a third, second time, the word put, I'm going to go into it later, which is an indication of you doing something in the Holy Spirit, by the way, but it is up to you and I to do something. It is an indication of you or me taking a step. So put uh, 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 verse 8 but now you you yourselves are to put off all this then he mentioned it again anger, wrath, malice blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth we were talking about this here Dignity. Dignity brought this up last night of how sometimes folks say certain things and you be like whoa <laughs> you know because you, now that you are redeemed, you begin to see some of those things yourself. And Paul put it here. Verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another. Since you have put, this is the third time the word put, since you have put off the old man with its deeds. This is also an indication that as a Christian, you have truly walk in obedience by putting those things under the cross and i have put again the word put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him and again when you put on the new man the new man is renewed according to the knowledge or renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Let me digress here a little bit. You know, when I think about evolution, of how evolutionists or Darwinism talk about how the molecules come together with, with, within millions of millions of years, if you ask me how long God has been here, I don't know. God, God will be here billions of years before he chose to create us. I don't know. But for us, I asked myself, I said, okay. I said, I get it. Okay, that's okay. But when did God, when did we become the image and the likeness of God? <laughs> if we were a result of molecules that Molecules are developed millions of millions of years. Then when did we, is it when we have fully evolved into our 
current st uh, station that finally God declare us as his image and likeness. You see the dichotomy here. You see the, the contradiction here. Anyway, it, it's I've, I've, I've thought about some of those things, you know. So here, when he says, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Because some of those things are all deeds of the devil anyway. Because the devil always bring contradiction into uh, the human um, existence to lie about things. And I have put on a new man, is a, uh, put on a new man who is renewed again, 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 a knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Verse 12, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and be beloved, put on this, the word again, put on a tender, a tender message, kindness, the tender message here, talking about kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. I'm going to go deep into that. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Verse 14. But above all these things, put on love. Again, that's the word again. Above all these things, put on love. The word put here is an indication of you and I doing something. Not in our own strength because now we have the spirit in us. But we have to activate that uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But put on love. So above all, but above all these things put on love which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Then our passage is coming out. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, dwell richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And again, why God has given us a passage from Colossians 3, 16, <laughs> For, of allowing the word of God to draw richly in us. When we, we look at the first 15 verses of that passage, where it says above all, or when it comes to 16, it says, let the word of God, because of everything that has been listed there for us, put of the old man. The basis for, for Paul's, Practical instruction. This is a practical instruction. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. A. If then you were raised with Christ, Paul here begins a section where he focuses on practical Christian living with the clear understanding that practical Christian living is built on the foundation of theological truth because we know that Jesus is really raised from the dead then our identification with him becomes real 
It is only when, it is only because we were raised with Christ that we can seek those things which are above. We have identified with Christ. We can seek those things above because we were raised with him. And these are all practical Christian lifestyle <clears throat> that is expected of every believer to live. It is not like a suggestion to us. If, if you and I want to triumph in every aspect of our lives, then we must allow Christ to dwell richly in us, his word to dwell richly in us, his instructions to dwell richly in us, his commandments to dwell richly in us. Amen. I... I, I want to be victorious. You know, if you neglect the indwelling of the word of God, situations may come. Sometimes they can hit you real hard, <laughs> press you behind the wall. But then you will always have this remembrance of who you are. And you can always come through. Without any pro that is when you allow the word to dwell in you richly. The idea of being raised with Christ was introduced in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, which says, Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead where Paul used baptism to illustrate this spiritual reality. Now, seeing that we are raised with Christ, certain behavior is appropriate to us. So much so that certain behavior is appropriate to us other behaviors must be inappropriate. And that knowledge only comes when you have realized that truly you've been raised with him in baptism. Mm -hmm. Because I always tell folks that baptism is outward confirmation of what has transpired inwardly. Yeah. Amen. Because you receive Christ by believing by confessing your sins, believing in your heart, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and other places that he rose again from the dead. Mm -hmm. Then when you do that, you identify, you now solidify that belief by water baptism, showing others that truly I have confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And you all here see that I've been baptized and a symbolism even of going under the water, which is being dead, buried. you know, buried. And then as you come up, you know, you are raised with him. Now, the opening verses of chapter 3 sustain the closest connection with the closing verses of chapter 2. There, the apostle remind us or remind the Colossians that ascetic regulations are of no real value in restraining indulgences of the flesh. The only remedy for sinful passions is found in the believer's experience of union with Christ. Because these, you know, these were all new. Christianity in the first century, there was no Christianity until Christ went to the cross, dies, buried, resurrected, and ascended on high. Until then, there was nothing known as Christianity. So all these guys who have given their life to Christ, it is just like you and I today, you know. And again, the enemy is right there. The enemy just, because the enemy has dominated us for so long. When we were old Adam, and now that the spirit when I have the dominance, the enemy is right there, according to Galatians chapter 5 and 17, that the two are in fight. Man, it's like 
The flesh, you hear me say this all the time, but it is so true. The flesh says, I've been here for so long. The spirit said, no, I am not in control. The flesh said, no, I've been here since I was born. You just got here. <laughs> in, in, in reality, that's what is going on. The flesh said, no, 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 no. I've been here. Don't you? I've been here. I am now 50. And you just got here six months ago. You want to take over? <laughs> the spirit said, no. I am, it's, that is, in reality, that's what is happening. Mm -hmm. So, right. it, you, you can see this in, 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 in the uh, early believers, whether it is Galatia, whether it is Colossia, whether it is Rome, wherever it is, you see this struggle. Because the old man, Adam, won't, still want to be in charge. Our flesh always want to be in charge. I, I can attest to that. Okay? Amen. Yes, even you've, you've, you've been born again for some time. Every once in a while, the flesh will raise its ugly head. Hey, I'm back. All right, <laughs> I want to take my position. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to remind you, say, I'm back. Mm -hmm. So it, it is why the, uh, the ascetic uh, uh, religions or regulations of the of it has no real value in restraining indulgence of the flesh, according to. Uh, the the Colossians way of living now because we were raised with Christ we should act just as Jesus did when he was resurrected uh, it is interesting for us you know it, it's God is so awesome man God could have done this from you know the heavens elsewhere somewhere not becoming like us but he wants us to know that if he had become one like us and did everything that he did for our life, then we can also do it. After his resurrection, Jesus left the tomb. So we should. Jesus left the tomb. So we should also live our old lifestyle. We don't live there anymore. Jesus resurrected from the from the dead. He left the tomb. So it is, we don't need to live our life. I'm going through the, the, the entire chapter from verses 1. Then we're going to come down to, uh, because this is going to make sense to us why uh, the Bible is cautioning us to allow or, you know, to allow the word of God to dwell in us richly as we go about our daily activities or day-to-day -day, uh, 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 taxes that we, 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 we carry, uh, we go about. Now, uh, let me see here. I'll talk about after his resurrection, Jesus lived in... No, after, his, after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus spent his remaining time being with and ministering to his disciples so should we live our lives to be with and to serve one another after his resurrection jesus lived in supernatural power with the ability to do impossible things so should we with the power and the enabling of the Holy Spirit, we can also do supernatural things. Well, what are some of those supernatural things? This could be very evident in your, you and I life, in your life of where uh, situations that you were able to face without, there is a saying that what did not break you will make you. So that is another aspect of a supernatural lifestyle that is expected of you and I as we allow the word of God to dwell in us richly. Now, after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus looked forward to heaven, knowing he would soon, soon enough ascend there. So should we. Remember the Bible says we should now, we should make our attention, pay our attention to the things of, of heaven, but not here. 
So should we? So should we? Recognizing that our citizenship is in heaven. Now, to, to emphasize it even more, Paul added the phrase, sitting at the right hand of God. This phrase, particularly in its allusion to Psalm 110, focuses attention on the sovereign rule which Christ now exercises. The command to aspire to the things of heaven is a command to meditate and dwell upon Christ's sort of life and on the fact that he is now enthroned as the Lord of the world. This was said by Wright, one of the theologians. Now, it says, set your mind on things above. The best Christian living comes from minds that are fixed on heaven. That does not necessarily mean that when your mind and my mind is fixed on heaven, we are living here. The Bible says we are in the world, but not of the world. So everything we do have this heaven agenda in our lives. They realize that their lives are now hidden with Christ in God. And since Jesus is enthroned in heaven, their thoughts, our thoughts and hearts connected to heaven also. The believer, you and I, is to seek the things above. The word seek marks aspiration, desire, and passion. In order to seek these things, the mind must be set on them. We must aspire things of holiness. Even during yesterday's teaching, I mean, during yesterday's uh, uh, watch night service, some of you were bringing that up. Uh, Deaconess, uh, uh, to be specific, was talking about holiness. This year, as we go into the year 2023, we, as we allow the word of God to dwell in us richly, our minds must be set on the things above, which mean we aspire to the desires of righteousness, the passion of holiness, and all those things. Love heavenly things. Study them. Let your heart be entirely engrossed by them. That is what we're supposed to be doing this year. Now that you are converted to God, act in reference to heavenly things as you did formerly in reference to those of earth. As we are now heavenly bound, you know, when we were in our flesh, when we were in old Adam, we do things to please the old Adam. Now that we are new Adam, we must please him too. But that can only come or be possible if we allow the word of God to dwell in us richly. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This, the promise of the return of Jesus is not only what we will see his glory, but so that we also will appear with him in glory. This is the revealing of the sons of God mentioned in, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 19, which says that for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So, as we go into 2023 and allow the word of God to dwell richly in us, these are some of the things we look forward to. Christ, who is our life, in another place, Paul wrote, for me to live is Christ. We see that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 21. It says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Here, Paul shows that he, this idea was not just for special apostles, but for all believers. Christ, who is our life. But sometimes we say, music is his life, or sports is his life, or he lives 
for his work. Of a Christian, of the Christian, it should be said, Jesus is his life. Jesus is your life. Jesus is my life. Just as we live for some of those things that, for him, music is his life. Reading is his life. The, the reading of the Bible, listen to the Bible, listen to Chris, uh, Christian lyrics, uh, lyrics that are edification, lyrics that lead you closer to God must be your life as we go into this 2023. Then you can see some great and mighty things. On that day, on that day, all will see the saints of God for what they really are. Not as they merely appear to this world. Paul, the prisoner, an eccentric Jew to the Romans and a worse than Gentile traitor to the Jews will be seen as Paul, the apostle, the servant of the king. The Colossians, insignificant ex pagans from the third rate country town, will be seen in a glory which, if it were now to appear, one might tempt it to worship. So it is, you and I today, even as we become some, before some, we are contempt because we worship God in the person of Jesus Christ. To some, time, to some folks, oh, we are object of mockery. But on that day, they're going to see that we appeared with Christ. But we can only have these assurances in our hearts as we go into 2023 and we allow the word of God to dwell in us richly. Put to death the things that are against God and part of this world. Like I was saying earlier in, in, in uh, verses 5 and 7. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Therefore put to death your members. Therefore points, again, back to our identification with the reason and enthroned Lord Jesus mentioned in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4. It is because we understand this fact that we can put to death the things in our life that are contrary to our identity with Christ. Then I am going to uh, put to death again. I'm going to leave it here since we have communion today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I wanna. We have 14 minutes that I would like uh, to conduct a communion service today. Maru Father, as they leave here, they are not leaving your presence. Whatever they touch in this year, because you are in them, by them, through them, whatever they touch, turn into gold. Father, may they are going in and coming in be blessed. Blessed in the city, blessed on the field. Bless in whatever they do. May you show them favor in you and give them favor through humans out there. I pray this morning, that, oh God, your peace that surpasses all comprehension. Guide their minds and hearts this moment in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Be glorified and yeah. be magnified because they are the head and not the tail on top and not beneath. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' much less.